If you watched my previous hardcore season, I've now done two of them, you would have realized that I got kind of burnt out on the rule set towards the end. The issue with hardcore is that it has a really level starting field where you have almost nothing but the quests aren't that difficult. As the quest difficulty increases in the game, you're, the game expects you to be able to keep up by unlocking more items from the traders and being able to purchase better gear. However, of course, that doesn't happen in hardcore. You never purchase newer gear. Bro. And that disparity kind of saps the fun out of it over time, and even larger creators who have done 10, 15 seasons of hardcore at this point, like Pestily, for example, they find that endgame grind really difficult. So, the Eggheads and I over at my Discord server rubbed our bald spots together, and we put together what we think is the solution to this problem, a scaling difficulty for Tarkov Hardcore, which we're calling Tarkov Unlocked. The basic premise here is that as you progress through Tarkov, you unlock more and more of the game's features. Now, I have timestamped this video with each segment, as there is a rule pretty much for every mechanic in the game, it's hopefully not too complex, but if you do need to refer back to it, there's this video, and all the rules are linked in the text description below. Now, if you're a Tarkov content creator or just a regular player and you like the sound of what you've heard here today, feel free to use them. The rules are meant to slow you down, it's more of a challenge, it's not meant to stop you playing the game. So, adapt them. If you find one rule's too difficult or too easy, remove it or change it. Do whatever you want. If you want to make videos on this topic, and I really encourage you to do so, all I ask is that you please link back to either my channel or this video, but if you don't want to, that's fine too. I understand. The recommended goal of the challenge is to reach maximum traders, but you can go for Kappa or really any other achievement you want. I've seen some people do level 1 to 20 speedruns with a hardcore rule set, and it was actually a really, really interesting idea. So if that's something that you're interested in, go for it. All right, but let's start with some ground rules first. Number one, you have to start off with a fresh account. I don't want to see anybody running around customs with level 10 strength and endurance with this challenge, okay? Not yet, anyway. I'll be starting the challenge with the wipe, and I recommend you do the same. But of course, if you'd like to do this in the middle of a, of a wipe, you just reset your account. It's really easy to do. You can do it inside the game launcher. Rule number two, you have to delete all of your starting items except for your pouch container. So no melee weapons, no food, no money, nothing. Everything goes except for your pouch container. That's what you take in with you to your first raid. You're completely naked otherwise. You may play with other players as much as you want, they don't have to be doing this challenge, although I would recommend it, but uh, the most important thing is that you must use VoIP to communicate. No Discord servers, no TeamSpeak, uh, it's a lot of fun actually to have to sort of negotiate your way around <laughs> precarious situations uh, using, using only VoIP, but well, I mean, it's up to you if you want to use that one. Like I said before, change the rules if you don't like them. And fourthly, and finally, you may only play with the right hand time slot. This rule is borrowed from Deadpine, another fantastic hardcore talk of creator. If you haven't seen his content, you should. The basic idea is to stop people like me who just love doing night raids from only doing night raids. So we only play with the right hand time slot, whatever time it is, that's when you go. Of course, the only exception to this is for Factory, where you can choose a time slot because the times don't change, and you have to do nighttime quests sometimes. But, with that said, let's get into the unlocked portion of Tarkov Unlocked. The first two rules are pretty straightforward. Selling to traders and bartering with traders are unlocked after your very first raid. So anything you bring out of the raid, you can sell. Anything you bring out of the raid, you can barter with. If you would like to buy an item from a trader, you must first get them to loyalty level 2. However, there are four exceptions to this rule. Number one, you may purchase anything you like from fence after the first raid. So you can buy, you know, damaged equipment and guns and ammunition from fence at a very overpriced rate, but you have access to that if you need it. Second, special items such as markers and other quest items, uh, factory maps, things like that that you can't otherwise really find, you can buy those from the traders after the first raid as well. Containers such as scav junk boxes, dog tag cases, ammo cases, whatever you need, those can be purchased right away too. And of course, you can exchange money with traders whenever you need to. Next up is post-raid healing. And this is our first rule that is tied to a hideout requirement rather than a trader level. If you would like to use post-raid healing, you have to first get the medical station in the hideout to level 1. Similarly, weapon repair is unlocked after reaching workbench level 1 and mechanic level 2. You need both. The idea is that you now have the tools and someone to teach you how to do it. Armor repair is then also unlocked at lavatory level 1 and ragman level 2. Insurance is unlocked at either prepper or therapist loyalty level 3. Once you get either one of them to loyalty level 3, you can use that trader to insure your items. So if you're prepper level 3, you can use prepper. If you're therapist level 3, you can use therapist. You can't use the other ones until you get them to level 3. As for the flea market, things get a little bit more complicated. 
Rule number one, no selling on the flea at all. It is the final thing you'll unlock in this playthrough, and uh, you might as well just leave the sugar behind, because it's not worth all that much to the traders. Buying items from the flea market is allowed in Tarkov Unlocked, but is split up into three distinct stages. Stage 1 is unlocked with Intel Center Level 1 or Skier Loyalty Level 2. Stage 1 will allow you to buy food items, barter items, and all keys. Stage 2 is unlocked at Intel Center Level 2 or Skier Loyalty Level 3. At Stage 2, you can buy weapons and grenades from the flea market. Stage 3 is unlocked at, you guessed it, Intel Sensor Level 3 or Skier Loyalty Level 4. Getting to Stage 3 allows you to buy weapon parts and ammunition on the flea, and more importantly, I think, it allows you to sell items on the flea as well. Next up comes your pouch container. As you level up, so too does your booty. Storing different items all the way up in there is locked behind different character levels. At player level 0, you get to put nothing up your booty. Nothing at all. Do some damn squats already. At level 5, you unlock the ability to place keys, money, and other special items like markers and signal jammers up your butt. At level 10, medical items and food items get added to the list. At level 15, barter items and clothing, that includes things like helmets and visors, may be placed in the pouch container. At level 20, containers may be placed in the pouch container as well. This includes things like dog tag cases or an injector's case. Level 25 lets you place ammunition in the pouch, and that kind of makes sense to me. I think you'd want some pretty firm glutes before you uh, ram some bullets up there. <laughs> you know, what if they go off? And of course, at level 30, weapon parts may also be placed in the pouch. And that's it. Then you are fully unlocked. But there is one more element of Tarkov we need to get to, which is scav runs. And I think this is what's really going to set this playthrough style apart from Hardcore Tarkov, is that you are rewarded for playing scav friendly, I guess, as a PMC, and uh, then that rewards you with more loot and gear as the game progresses. So scav runs are unlocked after the very first PMC raid. However, the location where you can scav to is locked behind your fence reputation. Each level of fence rep unlocks the next set of maps. You can, of course, go back to ones you've already unlocked, but you now get new ones with each new fence level. At less than one scav rep, no scav raids are allowed at all. Fence doesn't trust you yet, and uh, he won't send his boys out in your name. If you're not sure how you get scav rep without playing as a scav, taking the vehicle extract as a PMC will grant 0.25 the first time you take it, 0.12 the second time you take it, and then diminishing returns at halves each time thereafter. So if you just take the car on each of the four maps that has them, then you are able to uh, get to fence rep level one with your PMC in four raids, technically. More than one scav rep will get you into factory and this new Streets of Tarkov map. And normally the Streets of Tarkov map would be, you know, much higher up, but come on, everybody wants to explore it. And it'd be really interesting to see what it would be like as a scav. More than two scav rep gets you into customs and woods. More than three scav rep gets you into shoreline and lighthouse. And finally, more than four scav rep gets you onto interchange and reserve. And that's it. That's the whole rule set. So please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. This is season one. We will, of course, be making tweaks and changes. Things that don't work, we're going to find out. If you're doing a challenge on it, please do share it with my Discord server. My community would love to go check out your content. And uh, if you'd like to share your community with mine, that'd be great. It works for everybody. If anybody's open to collab on this project, I am keen and ready. So just reach out and I will make a plan. My business email is in the description as well as, uh, of course, the Discord server where I'm always reachable. Anyway, guys. That's all I'm going to say for now, and uh, I guess not as always. I'll see you in the first one. <laughs> Cheers.